Right, hey, welcome back to the Quick Speed Shop. I'm Josh. We're working on Dodge truck stuff today. Check this out. I got my frame here. I got my homemade little uh, rotisserie, like a chicken, made here with two engine stands. It's super sketchy, but I've got this thing clamped in uh, great level front and rear because I'm working on doing some fabrication here, welding up some gussets. The frame is upside down, but we're making gussets from the cab mount to the front spring hanger because the frame here is pretty pitted in here. So I'm making these, this is 3 16 angle iron. I've primed the frame and the angle iron in between here. And then these white marks, I'm gonna stitch weld at one inch spots at a time and then seam seal the rest. I'm not gonna fully weld it. I'm just gonna stitch weld it one inch at a time. That'll be plenty. Then fully weld around here and it's gonna get stitch welded to the uh, lip underneath here. You can see where it's doubled up over there on that one. So back here in the back, I just got some angle iron clamp there to keep this level. This thing's kind of squirrely, but I've got the frame leveled right out. So if we look down it, we can see it's level. So I'm going to weld these both up on here. I'm going to skip back and forth. Um, I'm going to put a couple more clamps on this one, but I'm going to skip back and forth so I don't get a lot of uh, heat buildup in the frame. I don't want to warp it or nothing. It's just kind of hanging out here up in space. I want to get the trailer hitch mounted. I got the Super Duty. Ford Super Duty trailer hitch. I need to add some width to my frame rail, so I'm gonna weld some 3 16 plate, widen these out, and then we're gonna set the hitch on here and drill it, and get that bolted on. That's not too bad. Got some nice welds on there. Um, I've just welded on the edges, attacked in the center, and I've got that's going to hold it on there. Um, and I also plug welded a couple spots on the inside of the frame, which you might be able to see over there. So this is going to be all right until I can flip the frame uh, right side up so I can weld. I want to weld down on all these edges and set upside down, like, like I said a second ago. So we got that good. So these are all set. I'm going to go in the back and cut out some steel plates from back there. We'll burn them in, well, then we'll trim the hitch. We'll get the hitch holes drilled and mounted, get the hitch kind of halfway uh, mounted up or get ready to mount. Okay, I got my steel laid out here for the hitch, and I'm going to do the same thing I did on the, going to do on the side pieces. I marked it out. I'm going to weld every other inch on the outside, and then, as you can see, the overlap here, I'll, I'll stitch weld it on the bottom. The stuff's not exactly as thick as a frame but it's close and actually the bolts are going to go through both thicknesses of metal anyways i just they're pretty close to the edge so i wanted to double it up so it's going to be fine and i think i'm going to in the middle here make some kind of gusset kind of like box this in just in the middle for extra support we'll see so i got both these laid out this rail is uh kind of pitted here so i'm glad i'm covering up some of the pits so i'll stiffen it up so i got them going i can uh Weld them on. As soon as I get these uh, welded on here, uh, I can set the hitch on. We can lay it out, drill out the holes for the bolts. This thing's got some pretty big bolts here. They're, I'm sure they're metric. There's some kind of monster bolt. And they got these retainers that came with the, uh, the hitch. But these are factory forward bolts here. And they look pretty beefy. This hitch is probably like a 10,000 pound hitch, I would guess. So it'd be Pretty big, good enough for the back of this truck. So I took my clamps off here. I just, this is, uh, <clears throat> these are all cooled down and everything. But like I said, I'll flip the frame over and do all the welding on the, uh, on the other ones. But I want to get all my bottom welding done here first before I do that. Okay, I got the hitch on here. I trimmed it off to clear the shackle bolt there. That used to, hitch used to come to about here and it was in the way. So I trimmed it nice around there. And I'm getting the holes drilled in here. I just drilled some pallet holes. I've got a, a special corn bit. I'm going to drill three-quarter inch holes in this thing. 
and then I've actually got to drill another hole in the hitch because I had to move the bolt holes back. I'm going to get the uh, get it drilled out here first. I'll show you the bit I'm using on here. It's part of this rotobroach kit right here. Rotobroach, get a reflection. There we go. And basically, got a cutter here with a pin that goes down in the center hole. And this will bore through that steel and build, drill me a three quarter inch hole. It's pretty nice. Everything's got to be heavy. Now I can take my roto brooch kit here and hopefully drill these holes. Well, that was quite a quite an exciting drill. I cut some of that out because it took a little while to do that with the two layers of metal. But ooh, the bolts go right through, no problem. Perfect. So I'll draw all the rest of these out, and then we'll uh, see what it looks like for the hitch to bolt on there. And I also cleaned up the threads in my bolts so I can actually thread them thread them together. They were all stuck before but they're working now okay i got the hitch uh bolted on here just uh loosely but it fits on here no problem I've drilled all the holes everything's good i actually got to ream that hole out just a touch over there that's why the bottom i just i just got to run a hand file through it but the hitch is bolted up on no problem i think i'm going to take some plate here uh some 3 16 plate and right where this hole is here you see this I'm gonna weld this plate in, actually back in there, and I'm gonna box this right in the center of where the hitch is gonna go on. So I'll clear the bolts, but I'm just gonna box the center of this to tie the bottom half of the frame to the upper part of the frame. And that'll just add a little bit of rigidity to it because it is just C-channel and it's a lot of weight, you know, when you're pulling on the hitch. So it's not gonna hurt to box it just for, just for strength. Right now what I'm working on, speaking of boxing, I've got this channel, it's like, I don't know, half by inch and a half uh, C-channel here. And the original cross member braces for this frame were all rotted out. It was a piece of stamp uh, metal, same thickness as this, that had it looked like a top hat. And it riveted on here, then it riveted on here to the frame. And that keeps your frame rails from flexing with the leaf springs from the side load. So I'm making new bracketry here. This stuff's pretty beefy, as you can see. It's like, I don't know, almost a quarter inch. And what I'm doing, these are gonna bolt to the frame rail, some grade eight bolts here, and then they're gonna bolt to the cross member, which the cross member is bolted in. But I think because I'll have bolts here, it's gonna be all removable. I think I'm gonna weld, weld these right to the cross member so there won't be a chance of it flexing there, and then it'll be bolted here. And it's gonna make that super beefy, probably at least as strong as it was originally, probably a little bit stronger, because these are uh, beefier. But I'm gonna do that back here for the leaf springs. And I've got enough material over here in the saw. I'm thinking about going up to the front cross member and adding one, because there wasn't any originally, adding one to the front like this, and that would tie into my new stiffening plate and just add a little more structure, kind of tie that center cross member at the cab mount in and take some of the flex out of the frame, frame back here. So I'm looking at really stiffening up the middle of the frame um, because this is where a lot of your flex would be here between the cab and the, and the leaf spring. You know, a lot, of, a lot of force in the center of the frame here. Here you got the leaf spring span in the back, so it's like a double arch this way and arch that way. Everything's all kind of spanning and the load is spread out pretty evenly. 
and there's a lot of strength in this arch, but up here in a straight section, that's why I did this first due to the pitting in the frame, and that's a weak area where you ever seen trucks on the internet that are broken half, it's always right here. So we'll beef this up, and if I add this, it'll make it even more beefy. It's better to have a truck that's too strong versus a truck that's not strong enough. So I'm just gonna cut a bunch of these. Uh, let's see, I need four more of these. I just take this channel right in the saw and I wing it off with a little bandsaw. I bought this at a swap meet for a hundred bucks. Well worth it, it was awesome. It's an Ensley, works good. I've got enough of this stuff. I just take the, uh, the cutoff wheel and I just notch this and I bend it, I put it in the vise and I just bend it. And then I notch it here and bend it the other way, but it'll make these and I'll weld up those gaps. And we'll have a whole bunch of cool bracketry here that's going to stiffen this thing right up. So, and being open like this, it won't hold a lot of crap. Like the old one was like a big hat that held a lot of salt and dirt in there and rotted it right away. All right, bam, it's the next day. I've got my uh, bracketry all made here and welded up. I just took the MIG welder and I welded up the little gaps. I cut to bend them and it should be nice and sturdy. Like I said, I added two to the front cross member. This is right behind the cab. So the cab would end here and this is under the box. But this never had any. There was holes, oh you can't see them, but there was factory holes here. Well, these cross members are the same. And there was holes like they could have had a bracket on there, but they didn't put one on. So I went ahead and just made two just because it's not gonna hurt this. Camera died for a second. So I've got two up in the front on that cross member. I got four back here on the middle cross member by the spring shackles, and I didn't do a test, but if you take this wrench, before you could flex the frame in and out a lot by doing this with the crescent wrench on here by pulling on it, and now with the bracket here, there's no there's no flex in that at all. So that's, that's why you need the bracket, or the brace on this rear cross member, middle cross member I should say. That's why I need the bracketry on this middle cross member because the springs are loaded, you know, on the outside of the frame and it would, they would tweak it real bad. So that's, that's why these are here. This is beefier than it was originally. I got the cross number bolted back in. These are bolted on. I'm actually going to take the welder and weld these uh, in the inside just so I had to put you over on the tripod. I've been having nothing but problems with this GoPro camera. I don't know if it's because it gets cold. I left it in the garage overnight, but it's 48 degrees in here. But it says low battery when the battery's got 60%. And it died on me three times. It died outside on another video when I was doing a tow truck video. It's killing me here. So I got you plugged into the wall. It'll put the electric right into it that way. So anyways, so I'm gonna take the welder and weld these back braces to the edge of this cross member. They'll still be able to unbolt from the frame here. Um, because this cross member bolts in. I'm gonna weld those too. That front cross member is riveted in, so it'll be all there, but I, I wanna rely on more than just the bolt to hold it back here, just because of the twisting force. I mean, it's not gonna shear the bolts, they're three eighths grade eight bolts, but I just wanted to help stiffen it up because this is where you get would get any type of flex. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with the welder real fast. After I hit it with a welder, I think that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I'm real close to getting this thing ready to paint. Come closer. Come closer, welder. There we go. Um, I've just got to rotisserie around. I've got to finish my welds on these pieces and then all the welding will be complete. Actually, I got to weld back in the trailer hitch. I got to do just a touch back there. But all the bottom welding, I should say, will be complete here. I'm going to rotisserie this thing around or, and paint at Eastwood Rust Encapsulator and then we should be ready to assemble, put the springs on and all the fun stuff. It's taken, this frame is a little bit rougher than I thought it was when I started, so it's taken a while to uh, get her dialed in, but it's dialed all the way up to 11 now.
So I just buzzed all six edges of the inside of these brackets. Boom, that's fine. And I primered the inside of them just with some rattle can primer before I put them on there. So there's not a lot of bare metal. I primered where they touch. I've tried to get primer and paint in around all the edges on this thing so there's nowhere for rust to start again on my mint frame that I, that I got going. But I think that is done. I'm going to unbolt the hitch and spin it around and just do all my top welding. Like I said, get that all welded up and this thing will be ready for paint. So that's about it. A little bit of fabrication on the old Dodge frame here today. I can't wait. I think next time we're going to jump back in on the engine over there. I've got all my hardware now to put the intake and the distributor and all that stuff in it. Button all that up. I've got some new headers I bought for it. Another set of cheap eBay stainless steel headers. We'll take a look at them. Button all that engine up. Get it ready to drop in this chassis. And I'm going to that sterling around i'm going to kick outside i'm going to drag, a, drag the dana 60 in here start getting looking at that but we'll get this frame painted up get the motor assembled start putting the rough country suspension on this thing got a four inch rough country suspension lift that's going to be super awesome get all that going and then maybe make this chassis a roller with the drivetrain then we can get the brown truck up here blow that apart start assembling it's like big kid lego legos just put it all together start building that truck on this new, uh, rest, this new restored chassis. So thanks everybody for watching. I'm gonna continue welding here and then we'll see you next time working on this Dodge, bam, here at the Quick Speed Shop. I'm a professional, don't try this at home.